Hey there, it's Matt. Welcome to this episode of Courage and Clarity. This is a conversation for leaders to help you make the most out of all that God has given you. Uh, today I want to talk about successful leadership, but I want to do it by not actually defining successful leadership. Uh, here's the thing. 15 years ago, when I started working in churches, there wasn't a lot of conversation about leadership. Uh, certainly John Maxwell was on the scene. Uh, Bill Hybels was really starting to uh, bubble to the surface. But there wasn't a lot of people focusing on leadership. And now here we are in 2017, and, and seemingly everybody has an opinion on what it takes to be a successful leader. And so maybe this would be the most helpful. Instead of me giving you sort of the dictionary concise version of successful leadership, here's what I'm seeing. Within the church space, um, when people are trying to capture what it looks like to be successful as a leader, uh, everybody's kind of working on a continuum between faithfulness and fruitfulness. So faithfulness to the scriptures, faithfulness to yourself. So there's a lot of conversation about being a healthy leader. But then there's also this sense of fruitfulness. What is being produced? It's the idea that healthy things grow and things should be produced. And so even though people have different things that they want to measure in terms of productivity, um, I do find that there usually is, in our definition of successful leadership, uh, some combination of both faithfulness and fruitfulness. And so what I would say is that you and I have to determine what success looks like for us along that continuum, understanding our own story, the way that we're wired, understanding the context, the situation, the circumstance that we're in. And so I don't know if there's one singular definition of what it means to be a successful leader, but I do think that those kind of twin engines, the twin wings on the plane, if you will, of faithfulness and fruitfulness can help you know that you can't choose one or the other. I think that if you're going to be successful as a leader, you need to have both. Now, let's talk about four competencies that need to show up in the life of a leader if you're going to be successful. So this is what I see in successful leaders, both inside the church and outside the church, quite honestly. Um, and so if you're a pastor, this will be helpful for you. Uh, maybe you're a leader in a church, but you do uh, most of your work you, the, where you get paid is outside of the church. And so I think this will help you as well. So four competencies that I want us to pay attention to. Um, first is self-awareness. Secondly, I want us to talk about the, the ability to be able to rest. Third, I want to talk about emotional intelligence. And then finally, I want to talk about our ability to empower others to lead. So let's start with this idea of self-awareness. Do you know who you are as a leader? Do you have a clear understanding of what your strengths are? What do you bring to the table that adds the most value to the people around you? What do you do? How are you wired that makes life better significantly for the church, the organization, the ministry that you lead? Now, there are a lot of ways to figure this out. Some of us just kind of understand this. We don't need a lot of, we don't need a personality assessment. We don't need a lot of tools to help us gain self-awareness. But if you struggle to have a clear understanding of what your strengths are, if you don't really understand who you are intuitively, then there are a lot of resources out there. DISC, Right Path, Myers-Briggs. I'm an INTJ, by the way, and Myers-Briggs. But the one that I would encourage you to use, because I think it's just easily accessible, is to go and grab a copy of Strength Finders 2.0. It's been around for a little while, but what you're going to get when you take that assessment is you're going to get a clear picture of your five most significant strengths and a clear understanding of how that impacts you and your leadership. And so it's one that we use in our church. I love using this with our leaders because I want them to understand that we don't expect leaders to be well-rounded. Most successful leaders are not well-rounded. They have these very sharp edges in their gifts, in their strengths, in their talents that do create the most value. It's the reason why people follow them is not because they do everything well, but because they do a handful of things exceptionally well. And so self-awareness, I think, is critical. It's the bedrock of successful leadership. And so if, if you struggle to know who you are as a leader... If you're in your 20s and you're still trying to figure out who you are as a leader, maybe you're in your 30s or 40s and life is evolving and you need to go back and reassess and reevaluate who you are as a leader, then I'd encourage you to pick up a copy of Strength Finders, take that assessment, and it'll give you a very clear picture of how you're wired as a leader. The second thing that I'd love to talk about, another competency that I think is critical if you're going to be successful as a leader, is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence to me has two elements to it. One is it's a clear understanding of how people perceive you. So you understand 
as you interact with people, um, how you affect them and the emotions that you create in them. Uh, from a very basic standpoint, we want to lead well. And if we're going to lead well, then people need to feel valued by us. They don't need to feel used by us. They don't need to have the sense that we really don't care about them or we're uh, really kind of messing with their time. And again, different personality types are going to struggle with this. Some of us are going to get this. It's going to come more intuitively to us than others. But this is actually a skill that you can grow in. The, your ability to be able to know how you affect other people and secondly, your ability to be able to read a room and know the emotional tone of an individual or a group of people. This is obviously critical if you're doing any kind of preaching and public speaking. It's also absolutely critical when it comes to interpersonal relationships. And so I want to give you, again, one other resource that you can look at. It's a book called Emotional Intelligence 2.0 by Dr. Travis Bradbury. Uh, it's, it's a pretty short book. It's pretty straight to the point. It's not going to give you a ton of theory. It's going to help you understand some of the core practices of developing and growing an emotional intelligence. If you have self-awareness and emotional intelligence, you're going to go a long way towards being a successful leader because in the end, leadership is all about people and how you take your skills and how your personality impacts the lives of other people and then your ability to be able to maneuver yourself and to respond to people based on everything from what they're saying, but maybe even more importantly, things like their nonverbals, their facial expressions. Can you understand uh, enough about human nature and people and the person that you're looking at and talking to to be able to uh, clearly connect with them and not miss what they're saying uh, with their words or with their body language? So that's the first two competencies, both self-awareness and emotional intelligence. The third competency that I think is critical for all successful leaders is the ability to empower other leaders to make great decisions. The ability to empower other leaders to make great decisions. Um, what I find is that great leadership is less about your ability to make every decision and it's more about your ability to be able to create an environment where more and more people are making great decisions. Can you create a fertile environment for people to do great work, to make great decisions, and to keep the weeds uh, out from everything that keeps them from making great decisions? Now, three things that have to happen in order for other people uh, in your church, in your organization to make great decisions. Number one, they have to be able to uh, clearly know what you want them to do. There has to be clarity in your leadership as you're developing them as a leader. Second, you need to develop them in competencies like self-awareness and emotional intelligence. You need to make sure that they are well equipped to make the kind of decisions they need to make so that you can give them control over very real decisions. People want the opportunity to have ownership for real things. They want responsibility. They don't want to feel like they're just a cog in a machine that isn't really making a difference. So you can give people real control of real decisions in your organization if you're clear on what you want and if you help them develop the competencies they need to lead well. At this point in the life of my church, I've been here 12 years, there are very, very few decisions that I actually make. And I'm actually having a lot more fun uh, because I love seeing the leaders in our church make fantastic decisions because we've tried really hard to be clear on what we're about, what we want from them, and to give them as much help developing the competencies they need so that they can do a great job taking control of the part of the church that we have asked them to serve and lead. And then finally, the last cup. So, oh, before we do that, here's a good resource for you. There's a book called Turn the Ship Around by David Marquette. David was a Navy submarine captain. And um, the book is both the story of his experience of how he reshaped his leadership into something very similar to what I just described. Um, and so with a very clear action plan, if you want to change and transform the leadership culture of your church or organization. So turn the ship around. And again, just like with all of our resources, we'll link this up below so you'll have an opportunity to go uh, and grab a copy of that book. Here's the last competency. Uh, if you're going to be a successful leader, you have to be able to rest. You cannot be on the go all the time. And so while this does have a range, some of us just have uh, more energy naturally and we can go longer and rest less, I do find that it is critically important for two things to happen for every leader. Number one, you need to be getting six to eight hours of sleep a night. Um, you need to make sure that your body has an opportunity on a daily basis to recover and reload. And then I think it's absolutely critical for you to observe this ancient practice of the Sabbath. For there to be one 24-hour period in a day, at the very least, that you are removing yourself 
from all that it takes in order for you to lead and to work. And so uh, a great resource for this is a book called 24-6 uh, by Matthew Sleeth. He is a former emergency room physician. Uh, it's a good read because he tells lots of stories, but also very practical to help you set up the practice of observing Sabbath and taking a stop day as he talks about in the book. So if we will do a, a consistent job resting, if we will empower other leaders, if we are emotionally intelligent, and if we have self-awareness, I think it's going to help us go a long way towards being successful leaders. So here's the clarity. Emotional intelligence, self-awareness, empowering other leaders to make great decisions, and getting rest. Those are the core habits of successful leadership. Now it's time for you to go out and be courageous. What are you going to do next? How are you going to take one of these resources that I've suggested perhaps and work it into your life and leadership so that you can make the most out of all that God's given you? Hey, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you down the road. Again, if there's anything in this episode that was helpful for you, would appreciate it if you would like it. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, would appreciate it if you shared it with other people, other leaders, that this can be helpful. And look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much for your time.